Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now there's no denying that buying a budget graphics card inevitably means having to make a few more tweaks. We can't just set our games to the ultra preset and jump right in, no, but that doesn't mean we have to play at the lowest settings either. And today we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of a budget graphics card. The settings that I use across the budget hardware I test are usually determined after a fair bit of adjustment and luckily you guys don't have to see behind the scenes, but there are always a few key methods I stick to in order to try and attain the best possible gaming experience and usually it's the little things that make the biggest impact. The first tip before following any of the others is to make sure your processor isn't bottlenecking your GPU or vice versa as an upgrade might solve all of your problems. Most of the time, googling the phrase does X CPU bottleneck X GPU, replacing the X's with your hardware of course will lead you to an answer likely to be found on Tom's hardware or other forums. Once that's been ruled out, we can get into the tweaks. So when you load up a game for the first time, the settings are often predetermined to a default that's apparently best for your hardware. Take GTA 5 here for example, it's a good enough looking game that features a wide array of graphical settings and in my experience runs pretty well, but also has a couple of options that will affect the frame rate quite significantly. One of which that's common, not just in this game but most, is MSAA. As you can see here, we've got the game at the settings it defaulted to with MSAA on, but look how the frame rate increases when we switch it off. Off. MSAA or multi sample anti aliasing smooths out those jagged edges, but it will take its toll on performance, and it may be worth just using FXAA or MLAA for a minimum performance hit, or turning off all forms of anti aliasing altogether for the best results, if you don't mind the jaggies. This also leads me to my next point and something I mentioned at the start, presets. Here we have the Bioshock Infinite running at medium and next to it we have it running on low. Side by side you may be able to pick out a few small differences but in actuality the difference isn't significant unless of course you're comparing low to ultra but the difference between the lesser presets in a lot of titles is sometimes very small yet the increase in frame rate may mean the difference between playable and not playable. This also applies to resolution. While most modern budget GPUs should handle Full HD just fine, demanding games like The Witcher 3 may struggle to keep a constant 30 frames per second, but at 900p or even 720p the frame rate becomes a lot more consistent, despite the fact that you will notice a slight drop in quality, unless your monitor is 900p or 720p by default of course, and then you'd be running your games at those resolutions anyway. Sometimes that may not be necessary though because here we are in Overwatch, one of a few games that features a slider for resolution scaling. At 100% the game will display at native 1080p, but turning this setting down to say 75% changes the render resolution but not the display resolution, so the lower quality image will still be displayed at your monitor's native aspect ratio. That's the simplest way I can explain it because I'm not 100% sure on all the intricate details myself, but I do know it improves performance and still looks better than dropping down the resolution, providing you don't drop the scale too much. Personally, I think this feature isn't used in games as much as it should be. If your performance is still lacking or you're not quite sure on which settings do what, or you can't find that balance between graphical fidelity and playability, then why not let Nvidia or AMD choose for you? With Nvidia GeForce Experience or the AMD Gaming Evolved program, you can click a button to optimise your games based on your graphics hardware. Take Fallout 4 as an example. I've set everything to low with 720p resolution and the game doesn't look too great. You may assume, depending on your personal hardware of course, that this is what you had to do in order to achieve a smooth frame rate, but what GeForce Experience or Gaming Evolved will do is optimise the settings so that the games you want to play not only run well but still retain an element of quality too. I'm not sure about AMD's Gaming Evolved but I know Nvidia's GeForce Experience targets between 40 and 60 FPS. I've had a pretty decent experience with this sort of software in the past but again results may vary. Last but not least there's always overclocking and thanks to MSI's Afterburner this can be done very simply because unlike overclocking a processor you can do this from within windows by adjusting a couple of sliders. For AMD cars this can be done from within the performance tab of the Catalyst Control Center 2. It's important to know your limits though and ensure that both your power supply is up to it as well as your graphics card cooler. 
I'm no expert in the field of overclocking and you'd be better off googling the subject or finding a tutorial video for your GPU here on YouTube if that's the route you want to go down. Because I haven't had much overclocking experience I don't really want to try and advise you guys on how to do it but the basic principles of ensuring stability and temperatures will still apply. So there we have it, those are a few tips that I always try and stick to in order to get the most frames out of my games. They are indeed quite simple but it's actually quite surprising how often things like this go overlooked I think if any of you out there are new to PC gaming as well then hopefully these tips may prove useful. So guys I hope you've enjoyed this video it's been a little bit different but I thought I'd put this one out there as a few of you guys have been asking me questions regarding your hardware and how to improve performance on lower end cards. So as always if you enjoyed it leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.